Oh, howdy y'all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I want to talk about a subject I haven't touched on yet, which is levelling alts on trade leagues. This has been somewhat inspired by a series of Reddit posts where people have shown off their ridiculous equipable at level 1 gloves, uh, and I'm going to be discussing those, but as well as every inventory slot, what you might want to consider. So this is aimed at people that have got sort of 5 to 12 exalts at least saved aside, and you've got a goofy build in mind, but you think it's going to be absolutely terrible until you reach high level. Now, one of the things that's important for this is that a lot of the uh, crafting that will be done in this is very item level sensitive, and I want to discuss that. The first thing you need to know about is the Book of Regression. This is something you can earn by selling a, an Obscuring and a Scroll of Wisdom to a vendor, and what it does, you need to have uh, passive skill points available, but it will reduce your character level. Four, three, Dominus two, to die here. one. I will disappoint him. And that allows you to do a, a number of things. Firstly, it allows you to be in uh, inside Lion Eyes Watch on a character that is not level one. And you'll see that's just preventing me from using uh, using this silly maul that I've got. Uh, it also allows well. you to mess around a little bit with some of the vendors. Uh, so, you'll notice here that the item levels, you can get item level 2 gear again from this vendor, which I wouldn't have been able to get when my character was level 4. Uh, however, to get item level 1 equipment, which we are going to want for a specific reason, you need to be in Farewell. the Twilight Strand. This character has never passed beyond the Twilight Strand. Uh, I just did, uh, did Hillock about 5 times on them, got to level 4, and now of course I'm back to level 1. And that's all I wanted to do on that was to farm a couple of gloves. So I'll just quickly bring those up. All these are is just white gloves uh, that are... Oh, that one's item level 1. That one's item level 3. That must have dropped from Hillock. That's no use to me. But this one here is item level 1. That's what we wanted. So anyways, uh, that was the only reason that this character exists. It was to farm those gloves. I got one of them in five runs of Hillock, uh, so your mileage may vary. They're not particularly common. In any case, uh, what we want to talk about here is the equipment that you're going to be using while you're, level while you're leveling a character. There's a few universal points first. Firstly, you can upgrade bench crafts as you go, and many items will take you all the way. If you start with a rare item that you craft on gloves at low level, uh, you can stick the lowest tier bench craft on it when it becomes available, and then as you uh, progress through your adventures, you can then stick a higher level life craft on it. Uh, and the damage mods on it will carry you all the way. Secondly, flasks. Life flasks, and if you need them, mana flasks. Uh, levels 30, 42, and 60 are the big levels for them. And you also want to pick up two uh, good Quicksilver of Adrenaline flasks. I recommend either Alchemist Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline or Experimenter's Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline, uh, but you can experiment with Perpetuals and all sorts of other things. Worthwhile, even going to the extent of getting them 26 quality if you uh, if you can. And minimum levels matter here. Adrenaline can't be rolled under 5. Experimenters and Alchemists can't be rolled on Quicksilver Flasks that are item level 20 or below. Uh, a third universal point is that many suggestions I make in this video are anti-synergistic with brutality support. You might want to use that support gem at endgame, but don't use it while you're leveling up. And lastly, don't spend a fortune on Twink gear, uh, unless you're doing it just for the, for the lols. The reason for this is that Twink gear is an investment in power leveling your next character. Uh, an investment needs to be able to pay off, otherwise it's not worth making. So spending 24 Exalted Orbs to create an absolutely perfect item level 1 uh, set of gloves that will be the best thing ever, that will be the best thing imaginable at level 1 this can be a lot of fun, but it's not a productive investment when you could get almost the same amount of uh, speed in progression for a set of gloves that costs only 24 chaos to craft. So keep that in mind. Uh, most of the suggestions I make can be improved by the use of hollow fossils. They can be Im improved by the use of uh, all sorts of other expensive consumables like exalting out the last mods just to put any old crap mods on on a set of item on a set of equipment uh, they can be improved by two implicit corrupting them and making as many as necessary to hit a two implicit corruption but all of these are just really super over the top a lot of the time okay so first up let's talk gloves 
The reason that I'm making this video was originally inspired by a number of ridiculous sets of gloves that were posted on to the Path of Exile subreddit. Now what I'm picking up here is a set of uh, a set of quite solid um, well poten uh, gloves that have got quite a bit of potential and some fossils. And what we're going to do with these is demonstrate some of the fossil exclusive mods that exist. So what we have here is an aberrant fossil and a frigid fossil. Uh, you don't need to use aberrant, you can use metallic, I just happen to own aberrants and I don't own metallics. Uh, but what you're looking to do is get, uh, there are four different mods that you're interested in here. There is a frigid fossil mod on gloves which adds a flat amount of cold damage to all of your attacks and spells. There is a fire version of that as well and you can't get both of them on the same item because if you have a frigid fossil and a scorched fossil in the same item, more cold modifiers cancels the more fire mo the sorry the no fire modifiers cancels the more fire modifiers. The you can't roll fire trumps the you ca you get more fire mods, and so consequently, you won't normally get both cold and fire damage uh, on the same item. I think the best way to demonstrate these is just to uh, is just to fire one off. So this is my item level one set of iron gauntlets, and just because it will look really bad if I don't do this. I'm going to get it quality first. Uh, in terms of sockets, they come later. So this has more cold modifiers, more chaos modifiers, no fire and no lightning. And we hit everything we wanted. Uh, you'll see here, adds 24 to 35 cold damage, which is almost perfectly divine, and adds 16 to 27 chaos damage. Those are the two rolls that I was looking for. You're not guaranteed to get them, uh, but there's a pretty good chance of doing so. Now the reason that I've gone for cold uh, is because when you hit level 16 you will pick up Herald of Ice because Herald of Ice is extremely good while you're leveling and this will help you inflict freezes in order to trigger off the powerful uh, Herald of Ice explosions that can then kill all sorts of enemies around you. Additionally this has, um, unfortunately this has hail on it and it doesn't have uh, any, it, well, it doesn't have that much in the way of crafting bench options. Many of the crafting options will increase the minimum level of the item. So just to demonstrate that, uh, I'm going to stick lightning resistance on it. Notice it has a minimum level of 1, which is not listed. Now it's minimum level 12. And that will be th uh, that will be the same level it's listed here. I'm going to remove that because I really don't want it. Uh, but just first, let's also... That's how you get 4 sockets on the item. Remove crafted mods. So that is the basic set of gloves that you're looking for. Uh, the reason that these are so good is that flat damage is just overpowered at low level. This applies to all hits, so that is spells that are not damaged over time and, and to attacks that you make, so not to minions, not to traps, and not to mines. And the amount of damage is scaled so high that it remains good well up into the upper middle levels. So Act 8, even Act 10, it's not bad. Cold generally pairs best with lightning. As I said, I didn't have any metallic fossils when I started making this video, and trading in this game can be a pain, so I didn't, I didn't go through it. But um, Herald of Herald of Thunder is a reasonably useful herald. It's not nearly as good as Herald of Ice is, uh, but it does have its uses, and so inflicting shocks on enemies is quite useful. However, this just matters a lot less than getting the freezes, so that you can then inflict that freeze and then get a uh, get a Herald of Ice proliferation chain going from it. Now, you actively want item level 1 items, and I want to show uh, showcase why. So if I just quickly swap out of the game client, uh, I'm going to transition across into the website uh, PoEDB. This is a list of data mined information. So it's got a whole lot of stuff from, uh, that's been taken from the game files. I'm going to assume that you're using strength gloves, but it doesn't actually matter. The mods are essentially the same. There's a couple of unimportant ones that change, but for the ones that matter, they're there. Now, if you set, in, uh, set a number in here, you can then specify the item level of the gloves that you're using. So by default, it's 86, but let's just stick in a 2, and it will then preclude everything that can't roll on item level 2 and lower. There are two mods that we don't actively that we actively don't want. Heated adds one to two fire damage to attacks, and frosted adds one to two cold damage to attacks. The reason we want these oh, that we don't want these is because I believe that they are lock that they lock out the equivalent delve mod. 
And so, as a result, uh, you either get you can either get frosted, or you can get the delve of the underground frigid fossil modifier. Uh, I absolutely want this twenty-five. You know, you can see there that that's an average of so it's forty-six to sixty. That is an average of fifty-three. Uh, sorry, not an, not an average of fifty-three. An average of twenty-six point five cold damage that you're inflicting on enemies as opposed to an average of one and a half. 25 more damage. Uh, you definitely want to get this roll instead of this roll. And the way that you can lock them out completely is by putting in item level one item. And then the only undesirable uh, prefix that you can roll is adds fire damage to attacks, uh, because then that would lock out the delve fire damage. However, you're not going to be able to roll that because you're going to be using added cold damage from the uh, frigid fossil. So you're very likely to hit exactly what you want with this uh, with this setup. So for that reason, uh, we're going to be using the very low item level gloves, which are a pain in the ass to farm. Uh, as I said, it took me five full clears of the Twilight Strand in order to get the set that I used in the uh, in the crafting video there. But I actually I got them on my first try, but then I didn't get a second one for four more. In any case, it's a nuisance, but it's worth doing. You only need to do it once. Uh, you can then four socket it, as I showed off, with the uh, crafting bench, and then you can four link it either manually or via the crafting bench. Now, in terms of other options for fossils, uh, Prismatic amps up the chance to hit flat damage, but also adds a steaming turd into the drop pool in the form of reduced ailment duration. Combined with the high pr purchase price, I don't feel it's worth using Prismatic fossils. Uh, however, by all means, feel free to, to experiment with them. Speed mods are all strong. There is unconditional attack speed in the uh, in the regular mod pool. There is the serrated 18% increased attack speed for socketed gems. And I might just bring up the list again at this point and demonstrate that. So if we have a look through here, the mods in question, and I will just... Uh, find them here. Socketed gems have 18% increased attack speed, which is tagged as being the serrated fossil. There is also socketed skills have 18% increased cast speed from etheric fossils, and there is increased 5 to 10% increased attack and cast speed if you have hit an enemy recently. All of these are very potent mods, and for that reason it can be worth considering using shuddering fossils, uh, etheric fossils, and serrated fossils. If you're playing this, if you're watching this video during the Legion League, however, endgame crafting demand for serrated fossils is through the roof, and as a result, these common, although these are common fossils, they're one fifth of an exalted orb each, and so I feel that they're too expensive for frivolous use here. By all means, if you're wanting to just craft the best thing possible, then go ahead and use them. Uh, we also have uh, so yeah, that's that's just a cost benefit analysis you'll have to make yourself. Now, Lucent also has some awesome mods available to it. Lucent is the mana one, and it gives you 2-4 to four mana gain for each enemy hit by your attacks. Mana gain on hit is one of those things that sounds really trivial, but that actually plays really, really well. Uh, unfortunately, it clashes with all of the speed mods, uh, both the speed mods from Etheric and Serrated Fossils, as well as Shuddering, and also the natural speed mod in the uh, standard drop pool, which is increased attack speed of skill, 5-7% to IAS. And so for that reason, I feel that the opportunity cost of using Lucent, uh, Lucent Fossils is too high, and a Mana Flask is better. Pristine Fossils are okay, but not amazing. And I feel you can get, you can get enough life on your, uh, on your um, Coral Rings to not need the Pristine Fossils. But by all means, uh, if you want to use them, go ahead. There are physical options instead of elementals. So, so far I've talked about how you can get added fire damage, uh, added cold, added lightning, and also added chaos with the aberrant fossil. The physical ones are considerably lower. You'll see here that you're only getting uh, an average of 8.5 physical damage, which is one third the amount that you would get if you were t uh, of cold damage by using a jagged fossil. You can also get increased physical damage against bleeding and poisoned enemies, so conditional physical damage uh, rolls with corroded fossils. I however feel that these simply are not high enough numbers uh, to merit, and what my suggestion to you is, even if your endgame build is going to use brutality support, 
level up using the elemental gems instead. Lastly, if you want to really uh, ratchet up the silliness on your gems, uh, sorry, on your uh, gloves, you do have the option of going for a corruption or even a two implicit corruption. Uh, your goal here is to get speed mod that synergizes. So if you're making caster gloves, your dream is to get a set of um, a set of gloves that have got 18% socketed uh, gem cast speed and also have 8 to 10% increased cast speed as a Val Implicit Corruption mod. Needless to say, this is pretty rare, uh, although there's only five options on item level one gloves when you corrupt them, so it's not a terrible chance, uh, but this is one of those things to do if you've really just got fuck you money uh, in, a, in a league and you just want to make something silly. This is where you're going, okay, I'm not trying to make... I'm not trying to make wise decisions, I'm trying to be silly because I want to make the best item possible and I don't care what it costs me. Uh, next up, after gloves, we have the chest. For the chest, there's really only one chest piece that I recommend for most builds and that is Skin of the Loyal, at least assuming that you've got, that you're coming into this with a considerable amount of currency and you're in a mature league. Uh, skin of the Loyal is a plus one tabula rasa that has locked colours, so you'll have to buy one that's got the colours that you want to use, and that ideally you will buy with a useful corruption already on it, but it's fine even if you can't get that. I think it's just hard to justify any other chest when Skin of the Loyal exists. It's always six linked, and it is, you know, it is stupidly powerful. Plus one to level of socketed gems is great. Plus 100% to global defences means that it functions acceptably, not brilliantly, but acceptably as an energy shield piece, should you be leveling energy shield. Side note, people don't usually level energy shield for a good reason, but, uh, you know, energy shield is a bonus on any other character as well. Uh, it'll also give you armor and evasion if you're stacking any of them on your other gear. It can also remain best in slot at endgame for some builds if you have premium corruptions on it. Uh, now, finding one that is in your colours with premium corruptions is going to be extremely rare and extremely expensive, uh, but you might be able to get one that's got your colours and a good corruption on it, a single good corruption, and if it's got a second corruption, that second corruption is rubbish. However, there are some extreme options that you can take, and the first one that I want to showcase is the uh, divination card, the Chains That Bind. And I'll just, uh, I don't have a full set of them here, but you see I've got four of four of 11 here of this set. There's a divination card that's reasonably available in a trade league, and that gives you a six link body armor. The item level, as is normal with a divination card, the item level is the item level of the character that turns it in, capped at 80. What we're going to do here though, is use a level one character to turn it in. It takes a little bit of gymnastics to get a level one character. You'll need to use the Book of Regression uh, thing that I showcased before, uh, because killing Hillock will automatically put you to level two, even if he's the first monster you kill. However, doing so will then let you turn in a set of the Chains That Bind. You'll get yourself a six link item level one, minimum level one armor, which can be any of the various item, uh, item armor types that can drop with no minimum level. So that's the lowest tier of pure evasion, the lowest tier of pure armor, and the lowest tier of pure um, of pure energy shield. Uh, all of which will be pretty terrible. Th the thing is, though, that because they have low stat requirements, the dexterity, intelligence, and uh, and strength requirements on them are low. That means that they're pretty easy to chrome. You can then craft this using serrated fossils to get socketed attack gems have minus 15 mana cost and or socketed gems are supported by level 1 maim and you can also use a bound fossil to get auras on you have 25% increased effect. Now this is not realistic in the legion economy uh, but if you're watching this in a future in a future period of path of exile and serrated fossils are cheap again then maybe that's something you can consider doing. Uh, I still feel that's a bit wasteful and that for the vast majority of players, Skin of the Loyal will be extraordinarily good. If you're leveling a caster, Etheric Fossils will give you supported by Arcane Surge, and Shuddering Fossils will give you a chance to gain Frenzy Charges when you are hit. Uh, these two things to, to combine pretty well as, as another option. Again, you can also use Bound Fossils to turbocharge your auras, 
and auras are something you will be using and haste is the one that you should use if you can't think of anything else to use. However, skin of the loyal is going to be better for casters almost always. There are also some silly, silly, silly options with faceted fossils if you've got money to burn and these can surpass skin of the loyal, but again, not worth it unless it's for the meme value and realistically, to ever consider making a skin, uh, to making a item level one chest that has faceted fossil crafts on it, you really need to be multiple mirrors, tier of wealth, and even then, it's it's a frivolous waste. So, anyways, for the gloves, you're going to be doing you're going to be using a crafter's set that's similar to these plague knuckles here, and for the uh, chest, you're going to be using skin of the loyal unless you have unless you have fuck you money. The helmet. Uh, this is a really simple. This is a really simple clean and cut case. You need to get resist somewhere, and Goldrum. Goldrum is where you get your resist on a character like this. Uh, Goldrum is a unique helmet uh, that has no minimum level, uh, so it's got a reduced minimum level all the way down to one, and that has 30 to 40 to all resist on it. it. Has no life, but you can live with that. It's still a super, super, super strong set a uh, piece of kit and is something that I would strongly suggest. So if I just grab one of these and I have one, don't know why it's in my 49 chaos tab, uh, it probably shouldn't be there. But this is the helmet I'm talking about. You see that it has increased evasion rating, uh, increased elemental resistances, reflects four damage to melee attackers which you don't care about, rarity you don't care about. All you want to do is just get one of these and four a four socket, four link it and you're good to go. If you get a low item level Goldrum, that's fine. You can still four socket it with the crafting bench. Uh, if your item level is 24 or lower, that is the only way that you can get four sockets on the item. Uh, if your item level is higher than 24, then so 25 or higher, then you can naturally four, four socket and then four link it using orbs of fusing and jeweler's orbs. In the boot slot, uh, the seven league steps are best in slot but expensive. Do not enchant these, do not corrupt them. These are an item from the Parandus League. They're very, very, very rare because they're considered a past league unique and they were rare in Parandus League. Uh, but they are just a set of boots with 50% move speed and no other stats on them. Uh, they are nuts. They are the best in slot. They are the thing to buy if you can afford them. They're usually a couple of exalts, but they do vary. This price varies wildly from league to league depending upon the availability of the Parandus Manor unique map, which is where they mostly come from. While we're talking about expensive options, Abrath's Hooves are insane, but also expensive. They transform all of leveling entirely because they give you a skill that just basically makes you shit fire behind you as you walk, uh, and they're really strong. Wanderlust at level 3 is very strong for providing movement speed 20 and freeze immunity. Uh, this item doesn't hold up well in later levels, but is very strong when you can get it. Dusk Toe at level 18 is very good. Uh, it adds a considerable chunk of chaos damage to spells and attacks during flask effectiveness. Oh, sorry, during flask up times. While you are leveling an alternate character, you probably have two uh, quicksilver flasks and you're going to try to be running them all the time. You may not quite succeed in this, but um, Dusk Toe will certainly make you feel a lot more damage when you've got that. Wake of Destruction is for attack builds only and comes in at level 28. It grants 1 to 120 lightning damage to all attack hits, uh, and this is just amazing. This is best in slot for any uh, attack skill that is capable of dealing lightning damage. It doesn't need to be specialized in lightning damage, so if you're using Ice Crash, uh, you should be using Wake of Destruction with it. Otherwise, uh, just uh, use a set of rare boots, and remember that the crafting bench has the ability to craft um, movement speed on boots. And... Something that people often don't realize is that the lowest tier of it item level, uh, is available at item level 1 and it is higher than you can roll on low level boots. So until level 15, that's the highest you can get on a set of rare boots. Then at level 15, uh, the natural roll of 15% becomes available. There's also one niche use case I want to point out, which is if your build is using a is considering using a four link herald of ice that is pure cold then if you're willing to stick them in your boots you can use frigid fossils to craft a set of boots that have plus two 
to the level of socketed coal gems in them. You'll still need to keep uh, throwing around other fossils in order to get uh, in order to get a, a set of boots that's an overall strong package. But this will mean that your Herald of Ice kills things earlier than it otherwise would, and that any supports that you're using, like hypothermia, in your boots. Uh, will have more effect as well. But mostly you're doing it because Herald of Ice is good and more damage on Herald of Ice is even better. You'll still want to use Shuddering Fossils for speed if you're crafting things this way. Uh, and Shuddering Fossils, you'll just have to make the judgement call as to whether they're worth the cost that they are based upon your league economy. Next up, let's talk rings. For rings, there are the three Berex rings that are worth cons considering. And I'll just jump up to show uh, to showcase those because these are one that you need to give some thought to um, yourself based upon what you're trying to do. So hang on, while, while I'm here, I'll just bring up um, that's Dusk Toe for anyone that's not familiar with it. 15% move speed, uh, 20 to 30 life, and adds approximately 27.5 chaos damage to spells and, and attacks during flasks. And Wake of Destruction is the one that adds adds an absolute shitload of lightning damage. So, let's just go with the Berex Rings, and I'll bring these up. There are three of them, and these are all quite rare. In fact, they're very rare, uh, because they're League exclusive. Uh, there is Berex Grip, which is the Cold and Lightning one. Uh, it adds a lot of lightning damage to spells and attacks. It adds a lot of cold damage, and it adds some life. It's a very, very, very strong ring. Uh, Berex Pass which adds cold damage to spells and attacks, a fair bit of fire damage, some energy shield, which is okay, and then has a, the meme ability of 5,000 armor while frozen, which you probably don't care about. Although, uh, it's actually surprisingly effective at low level. And then there is Beric's Respite, which adds fire damage to spells and attacks, which is why you wear it, adds some lightning damage, and then has this uh, interesting shock and ignite proliferation on death effect. In any case, all of these rings are excellent, uh, they also will cover some of your resists. They're all available at, at level 20, and they're very strong. And you can vendor all three of them to get the Taming, which is another extraordinarily, extraordinarily strong leveling item that, uh, for many builds, is actually good enough to use well, well, well into endgame. So those are some of the rings that I think are uh, less known that are worth looking at. Thief's Torment as well is another option. Uh, Thief's Torment, I'll just quickly bring up in case because it is a rare, it is quite a rare ring. So um, I'll showcase this here. Uh, you'll notice that it has a lot of resistances. You probably won't get it perfectly divined when when it drops. So let's assume you've got twenty. You can then bless it so it's thirty percent to all elemental resistances. Uh, a huge amount of life and mana gained for each enemy hit by your attacks. Has a very serious drawback of you can't use another ring. However, it is so strong that it is well worth uh, giving up both of your uh, ring slots for. It also has a considerable boost to increased item quantity, and that makes it useful at endgame as well. Your other option though for, for rings is coral rings with life are also fine. Uh, prismatic fossils generally help you hit resist, but I would suggest not using them. I would suggest just buying low item level coral rings if you want to go with rare rings. And life caps out pretty early. By level 44, you can equip rings with the with the best life roll available on them. Uh, strength strength caps out later, so the you, ultimate amount of life that you can get on a ring is having a high tier strength roll combined with a high tier life roll. Uh, you won't be able to get that until your level uh, until you, you're no longer looking at twink gear, but it is still something very very uh, solid to consider. So for there, if you decide to go with the rare ring approach, then just look for rings on poe.trade or or the uh, pathofexile.com forward slash trade site. Look for rings that other players are selling but have a low minimum level, high total amount of life, and a high total amount of resistances, and you should be able to find something that will help you out. I don't suggest any serious fossil crafting of twink rings. The way that we seriously fossil craft are, are the gloves, and we game the system a lot with them. Uh, I don't think that you will get your that you'll get returns on that investment. Next, let's have a quick discussion of amulets. Firstly, life and resist rares are fine. Uh, you can also get stats if you should you need them. 
Amulets are the slot that are best for giving you strength, intelligence, and dexterity. And life on a two-stat base where one of the stats is strength is an excellent option, especially if it comes with good resists. And you should be able to trade for these off other players. One very powerful option is the very common unique Karui Ward. And if I can actually type that right, uh, I'll demonstrate what Karui Ward is. You'll see here that this is just a dexterity and strength amulet, gives you some accuracy, gives you some projectile speed and damage. But then the key line here, 10% increased movement speed. This can be corrupted, and corrupted amulets can get 8-10% to increased movement speed as well. If you can get the perfect corruption, uh, you're getting 20% movement speed on your amulet, which is a slot that usually doesn't give you any. That's an incredibly powerful uh, leveling item, but will not be cheap. You can, you can equip it at item level, uh, sorry, character level 5 as well. If we then want to go to the next step up, and that is Dereso's Sil Dereso Salute. This is basically another movement speed amulet. Uh, this time it is conditional movement speed. It's only when you're on full life. Um, but the, you know, the, the fact that you've got a huge amount of two resists on an amulet, plus weapon range, plus these, um, you know, plus these additional effects here. Uh, this amulet is good even if you are not a melee character, but if you are, and especially if you're playing Cyclone, it's conceivably even something you can use at endgame. And if you can get this corrupted with uh, movement speed on it, then you have a very, very, very potent leveling toy. Astramentus is a very rare, uh, unique amulet. One that I have only ever, owned, only ever found once in my time playing Path of Exile. However, don't worry so much about it because it is something that you can, um, you can acquire via in trade because other people are getting it. Astromendus will give you a tremendous boost to attributes. In fact, it will solve all of your intelligence, strength, and dexterity requirements on all of the items you want to equip uh, for the entire game. It's something that, that will solve a lot of problems for you, and it also functions as a life necklace as well because let's assume that you, that you get an average roll, so 90, and then you you bless it perfectly to 16. That's a 53, that's 106 strength, which then translates to 53 life, which is actually fine, especially for an amulet you can equip at level 20. Uh, finally, we've got Victoria's Acuity is something to consider, and then at level 32, Sacrificial Heart. This is a monster of an item. This is a pure damage item. Have a look at this. Fire damage, cold damage, and lightning damage. This is like, the, on those um, gloves that I just crafted, the amount of flat damage that you're getting on this item is incredible. Uh, don't worry about all of the Vile skill synergies. Uh, maybe you'll use them, maybe you won't. Just look at these three lines at the top. They're the reason that you use them. These apply to... Uh, these are global damage, so they apply to your melee attacks, your ranged attacks, your spells that hit. And basically, um, anything that originates from you and that is not a damage over time effect. And the amount of damage is really meaningful and will remain meaningful at all, all the way through the leveling experience. So, Sacrificial Heart is great. It does come in at 32, which is um, a little bit late, like you've, you're sort of already a good way through the leveling process at this point. But it's insane damage just as you might be starting to fall behind, just as your gloves no longer feel like they're doing everything you need them to. Next up, uh, a quick word on weapons. I'm not going to go exhaustively through these all, but uniques dominate rare weapons here unless you happen to get a very lucky uh, incursion temple drop, uh, which can drop from sources like the... Uh, which can drop from sources like the Legion in the current Legion League. What matters for your build will vary, but generally, all of the uniques, with the exception of really weird build-around ones, are insanely good weapons at level, solid 8 levels over, and still remain serviceable when you're 15 levels higher than the minimum level of the item. So, if we were to have a look at, uh, say, Unique Axes, I'll just bring up a, a list of them all, and you'd be able to see here. Something like Dread Arc, which is not a particularly popular, uh, not a particularly popular axe at all, uh, the amount of damage that it does is just miles higher than one-handed 
item, uh, item level 16 axes that are generally available. Uh, and that's even if you don't have any particular synergies for the fire damage that it does. This pattern will continue with all of the various uh, with all of the various axes, and whether they be one-handed or two-handed. So Reaper's Pursuit, for instance, deals a staggering amount of damage for a level 33 item, even though again it's not a very good uh, unique item. It's just something that gets the job done. Now, you're going to be swapping your weapon often. Like I said, these uniques are insane at level, they're solid 8 levels over, and they're serviceable 15 levels later. Uh, but you're going to be changing them often, and so you put your main skills in your chest, and don't bother 6-linking your weapon. Uh, the only exception is, in the Legion League, there's a good number of 6-link unique items that drop that way. You may or may not have seen one yourself, they're pretty rare drops, but across the economy as a whole, there's plenty of them dropping. So something like a six link wide swing uh, would never be something you would six link yourself, but you may be able to pick one up for the sum of, you know, 35, 40 chaos orbs at the time I'm recording this video. And if you can get that, then great. That's a, um, that's a really solid, solid choice. In any case, that's all I've got really to say on weapons. Uh, you're mostly going to be using uniques. Don't worry about rares. And the only exception is if you're on a caster class, uh, then, uh, and sorry, in a caster build, you'll want to use the recipe for making plus uh, for making plus one to socketed gems uh, caster weapons early on. So again, if you're ever not sure of what that is, uh, just bring up the vendor recipe system, and then you will be able to get. Uh, you will then be able to uh, bring down in the, um, you'll then be able to find the relevant information in the crafted section, crafting section here. So weapon with plus one to level of lightning, fire or cold gems in this item, you'll turn in a magic scepter or wand, a ruby ring for plus one to fire gems or similar for the other types, and an orb of alteration. And this will then give you a weapon, the, a, a single or one-handed weapon with the same links as your original weapon had, and so as the input scepter or wand, the same base item type, the same item level as that, but that it will have its only mod will be plus one to socketed lightning gems or whichever, whichever one's appropriate for the type of ring that you put in. So that's a really useful, um, that is a really, really useful recipe to have in mind when you're leveling up. There's a number of other options here that I don't really feel are worth using, but that are are worth your while knowing in this crafting section as well, in the Vendor Recipe section page on the Path of Exile wiki. In any case, uh, next up we have belts to consider. Now, the first thing is to note is that belts are the most wide open slot. For gloves, there's no real question you're going to want to be using a set of rare gloves that have been fossil crafted. For chess, you're pretty much always going to use Skin of the Loyal, and for helmets, you're pretty much always going to use Goldrum. But for the belts, there's, it's a wide open choice. There's lots of options to consider. However, there's a couple of uniques that I want to point out as things that you may wish to, uh, you know, to jump ahead to. So firstly, let's just go with String of Servitude, which is a drop. This item drops a lot from the boss of the Incursion Temple. Now, implicit modifier magnitudes are tripled. And the item is corrupted. Now it looks like it's got 25 to 35 strength, however it will always have a Vial Implicit. The Vial Implicits that are worth really looking for on this, uh, I think that the best one is uh, 14 to 16% to all elemental resistances. This essentially becomes a second Goldrum. A String of Servitude at item level 1, uh, or sorry, char minimum character level 1, becomes a belt with 42, 45 or 48% to all three elemental resistances. This is amazing, uh, and it can fill a lot of holes in your build and solve a lot of problems. Second up is the Darkness Enthroned. And this is the, one of the simplest items ever. Uh, it is a Stygian Vice with two Abyssal Sockets and 50% increased effect of Socketed Jewels. Uh, Stygian Vices are great, they give you uh, they can give you life, they can give you resist, they can give you damage. When you equip this item at, at level 1, you're going to want to socket it with, uh, I believe at least, with resist and life jewels. And then as you get to higher character level, 
you may be able to go for more damage in there. However, to start with, you're just going to have so much damage on your gloves that you're not going to need them, that you're not going to need anything else early on. Uh, you can then swap around your Abyss Jewels as you go. The key thing to, ke to keep in mind is don't try to craft low item level Abyss Jewels yourself. Uh, instead, just trade for them from other players. There'll be players that roll these while they're trying to make a high item, while they're trying to make an end game Abyss Jewel. They'll come across something that is too good to roll over and they'll put it up for trade. Those are the ones you should be buying. Don't try and roll these yourself. Minimum level 1 Abyss Jewels are hard to intentionally roll. Now, Famine Bind is a very little known flask that is really worth considering. And the reason you consider this is because of the 60% increased flask effect duration. Uh, that, on its own, makes for an excellent item when you're at low level and your Quicksilver flasks are doing a lot of work for you. Uh, you also gain, you'll gain less flask charges, so it can be a bit difficult to balance. You probably want to use one more Quicksilver flask. Uh, but dealing 50 chaos damage per second to nearby enemies is silly. This is a past league exclusive item, so it's fairly hard to come by, uh, but it's not impossible, and it's available at, min at minimum level of 11, so it's very good. Next up we have the option of uh, using Prismatic Fossil Crafts, and I've done an entire video on Prismatic Fossils that talked a bit about using them on belts. But essentially here what you're looking for is a low item level. So let's just stick in item level 10. And we'll demonstrate what you can roll here. Uh, you can get the magical mod is elemental. Increased elemental damage. 25 to 30% increased elemental damage on a prismatic fossil. This mod is very strong. It also stacks with, say, the Scorch fossil increased fire damage or the Metallic Fossil Increased Lightning Damage, or the Frigid Fossil Increased Cold Damage. Uh, so for that reason, if you're playing a build that has a primary skill that deals one type of damage primarily, uh, say for instance a Lightning Arrow character or a Winter Orb character, uh, then you can get a lot out of uh, using Prismatic Fossils in conjunction with Cold fr Frigid Fossils or Metallic or Scorched as appropriate. Uh, this can then add a lot of damage and in addition to giving you a lot of damage, because you're rolling with a Prismatic Fossil, you've got a very good chance of getting multiple resistances on your belt as well. So Prismatic Fossil Crafts are excellent, and I'll leave it up to you to decide what item level belt you want to use. I think a low item level uh, leather belt is an excellent choice, uh, but feel free to experiment here and you know try just try things until you find something that works. In terms of other unique items, uh, you have the uh, you have Prism Weave is a very solid uh, unique belt that comes up at item level twenty. Oh, sorry, character level twenty five. Bisco's Leash at thirty, and then if you're really rich, Headhunter at forty four is insane. But doesn't really like. I mean, obviously everyone knows that Headhunter's the most powerful item in the game at end game. Uh, but for leveling, it's not as absurd as it seems because you don't it, you don't kill as many rare monsters while you're leveling. Uh, that said, it is still absurd. However, the one that people forget about is the Wretch. And this is the same item level, or sorry, same minimum character level as Headhunter. And what it does, firstly, it's a solid life belt. You see, it's a rustic sash, and it gives a lot of life. That's nice. And resists, so you're not, you're not missing out on things here. 60% increased flask duration with this drawback of 30% reduced flask charges gained during flask effect. So basically, so far, it's a better version of Famine Bind, and it's a much better version. Then we have 15%, oh, then we have 15 increased movement speed during any flask effect. This is insane. And we also have 200% of life leech applies to enemies as chaos damage. This is a complex mod to understand, but basically, while you are actively gaining life at the expense of enemies, this will be hurting those enemies with chaos damage, but it's 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 not the reason you're using it. You're using it because it's a solid life and resist belt that happens to have this beautiful mod on it as well. So the Wretch is a very solid option for leveling as well. Um, so 
all in all, I think the belt slot is wide open. There's lots of options you can t you can choose between, but I think the wretch is a really good way to go once you get to it. And darkness enthroned or a prismatic fossil crafted belt are very good choices until that point. In any case, uh, that's all I've got to say on the questions of leveling alternate characters. Uh, just remember that spending an enormous amount of time on acquiring the perfect gear set and spending lots and lots of precious exalted orbs and super rare fossils like hollow fossils or tangled fossils and the like isn't worth it if all you're doing is say, is getting yourself to maps say 30 minutes faster than you otherwise would. But low, a low investment into twinking is definitely worth it. And for those of you that just want to, that just want to have some silliness in your life, then by all means, if you've got lots of currency, spend it on making your character get to get to, um, level as quickly as possible. In addition, we've talked a lot about gearing, but in terms of strategy, one thing I do suggest you do is at least consider uh, going into the delve mines quite early in your character for the extraordinary XP that you'll get there uh, when you're leveling. You want to be rushing, rushing, rushing towards the main act boss goals, uh, and then especially when you're twink, so you've got ridiculous, you ridiculously outgear all of the content you're fighting. So you know you might say get to Malachi in Act Four and kill him, kill each phase of him in five seconds or less. When you then get to um, when you then get to high level, you want to be going through the delve mines a fair bit, especially if you've got a developed mine from another character. You might, for instance, be level 68 and then be able to immediately jump into tier 7 equivalent delves, uh, clear through them and just rocket, rocket, rocket up to level, you know, to level 85 there. And then at that point, you've got access to absurd endgame options for uh, gaining level, uh, further levels like enriched Chaola's Breach Stones or pure Chaola Breach Stones or all sorts of things like that. In any case, if you have any questions, fire away below. Otherwise, hope you have a good one.